My next recipe is a proper British classic that's super simple to cook and costs next to nothing, a delicious apple crumble. Crumbles are the perfect way to use fruit when it's in season. There's lots of it about, it's nice and cheap, but most importantly, the fruit's at its absolute best. First off, I'm gonna make a really nice light caramel. Pan on, nice and low. Great two apples. And this helps to almost sort of pure the apple so much quicker. And there's a lot of flavour in the skin, so don't worry about peeling the fruit. Whether it's pears, plums, peaches, flavour's in the skin. Nice. To start the caramel, a couple of tablespoons of sugar. The sugar helps to get rid of the tartness in the apple. A touch of cinnamon. That starts to make it a little spicy. Open up your vanilla and just scrape out all those seeds. Now, this just makes it light and fragrant. All those seeds in to the sugar. When making caramel, be patient and always swirl the dish instead of stirring it. When the sugar goes brown, add the apple. Mm. That starts to sort of cool down the caramel, but it gives it a really nice sort of caramelized puree. Apple's almost disintegrating. It smells incredible. Turn the gas down. Slice up two apples. It's a crumble that's got no frills. Straightforward. No faffing around. No peeling of the skin. I want them to sort of stand out from the caramel. Apples in. Now those nice thick chunks of apple are sort of almost bedding itself into the puree. Dried cranberries. Gives it that nice sort of shock in the texture. Sweet and chewy. I want it to sort of taste zesty, spicy, so sit the lemon zest on top of your apples and cranberry. Fresh lemon juice over. And that just gives that extra acidic kick. Takes the cranberries, the apples, the caramel, and the cinnamon to another level. Turn the gas off. Just let that sit. And let's concentrate on the crumble. Flour in. A couple of tablespoons of demerara sugar. Sugar helps to get the topping nice and crispy. Butter in. Give that a nice little sort of rub. What we're looking for is like a, a breadcrumb mixture. Lightly season it with a touch of cinnamon. And the demerara sugar sort of helps to get a nice fine crumble mix and it stops the butter from sort of melting in that flour. So that's the basic crumble mix, but I'm not finished yet. Muesli. Two thirds crumble. One third muesli. Mix that in. If you haven't got muesli, then crunchy granola works brilliantly too. Lovely. Now, start off in the center and work your way around. I want the crispiness on the top, the puree on the bottom with the caramel, and then the texture in the center. A good tip, turn the gas back on. I want it bubbling before it goes in the oven, because then you've just got to cook the top. So as soon as you see that caramel, Starting to bubble down the side. In she goes. Let's go. Bake at 200 degrees Celsius for 12 to 14 minutes until golden brown. Smells amazing. <sighs> Beautiful. Still bubbling. And look at it. A delicious but very simple crumble with apples at their absolute best. Beautiful. Pan on for the stuffing. It's a saddle of lamb, basically a sort of Rolls Royce cut, perfectly shaped, and it suits stuffing to an absolute tea. For the stuffing, finely chop an onion. Garlic, nice thin slices. Oil in. Onions and garlic in. It's just salt and pepper. Make sure the stuffing is beautifully seasoned so it helps to season the inside of the lamb. Now we've got the colour on those onions. We're going to throw in some pine nuts. And that helps to give a bit of a texture. Here's where it starts getting really exciting. Spinach in. And just lay the spinach over the pine nuts. It looks like a lot of spinach, but that's going to condense and disappear almost instantly. 
so much more flavour in spinach when you sauté it as opposed to steaming it or boiling it. Gas off. And look at that. Now, to bring that together, no eggs, no breadcrumbs, crumpled feta over the spinach. Feta cheese adds a beautifully salty, sharp and creamy flavour. What this does, it brings that stuffing together. Now, open up the lamb. Keep those little fillets to the side. That's the channel that we want to stuff. So I want to just open that up a little bit there. Salt and pepper, lightly. And before we put our stuffing in, we're going to season it with sumac. Sumac is a wonderful lemony spice that goes brilliantly with lamb. And you can get it in most big supermarkets. And it sort of cuts through that thick, rich sweetness of the lamb. Open up that lamb there. Take a spoon. If you're preparing this for the day ahead, then let the stuffing cool down. It's inevitable when you start rolling it and tying it, something's going to squeeze out. So load up the ends. Take these beauties, these little fillets, and just support that stuffing and sort of increase that beautiful tunnel. And then from there, over, there, and bring that towards you, and then roll. Like I said, some of the stuffing's going to come out. Now, we we'll tie it, first off, around the side. And don't worry about some flash butcher's knot, just tie it. One in the middle. You can get butcher's string from your local butcher or at cookware shops. They go too tight. Go too tight, it just forces all that stuffing out of the lamb when it's in the oven. Nice. Now, we just season the top of it. Roll the joint to make sure all the skin gets seasoned. Now, you think normally that just goes in the oven like that. That's how my mum would do it, but get your tray onto the gas. Oil in. Get it really nicely coloured. None of your stuffing's coming out of the sides, really important. Look at that colour, beautiful. It does kickstart the roasting process. Gas off, into the oven. Cook for 45 to 55 minutes, depending on how pink you want your lamb. Lift the lamb out of the fat to rest. Resting it raised up in the tin will stop it cooking, but not cool it down too quickly, and means you won't lose any of those lovely juices. Next, I'm making a simple but sophisticated accompaniment for the lamb. Top and tail the cucumber. Peel it. Cut the cucumber into three. And just core. Taking out all that, it's just sort of watery, seedy, and it spoils the flavor. Slice the cucumber. Cucumber in. Really nice way of making a cheap and cheerful cucumber look glamorous. We're going to dress that cucumber with a nice, fresh yoghurt. A couple of tablespoons. Next, some fresh mint. Dress it. Touch of salt. Touch of pepper. And then pomegranate molasses. That just sweetens it up. Finish that with lemon. Mix that up. Lamb is rested. Carefully take off the string and then just gently Pull them back. Straighted edge knife that's going to cut through that crispy fat on the outside instantly. I tied it purposely so I can get my portion control from the lines. Hold it nice and firmly. Look at your line where the string was and look. And this one is going to be amazing. Lay and down. Just in those two slices there, it proves that stuffing meats is for special occasions because that is a saddle of lamb at its absolute best. Stuffing meats and fish not only makes them look fantastic, it also gives them an extra added flavour dimension too. Once you've mastered the technique, you'll be able to turn out dishes that will guarantee you'll have an unforgettable feast.